Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invites you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Of course, today again I'm here with the understanding that God is a wonderful, precious, sweet God. And today I want to thank you viewers wherever you are, that Jesus Christ is our Savior and soon coming King. This morning I was home and I read the script here and it really, really, it touched me, it somehow thought, uh, allow me to see, sorry, and to understand what the mind of God look like and when God is looking for a man and how God can use that person. Of course, we understand the story of Moses and we understand how Moses grew up in Pharaoh's house and at 40 years of age, he has to run for his life because he killed an Egyptian and then he spent another 40 years in the wilderness with the priest, Midian, the, the priest of Midian I married the priest of Midian daughter and then Moses tend the sheep and then God called Moses and gave him instruction and the instruction that God gave to Moses it was very much it was very much interested it was very much motivated and as a result of that God was better able to give him all that he needs to receive to go forward the Bible says in Exodus chapter 7, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I commanded you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh what I say to you, Moses. When we understand the life of Moses and the life of Aaron and the life of Pharaoh, the Bible tells us that when Moses, when Ab, when um, when Moses, as a man of God, after leaving Egypt and going into the wilderness, he found himself a wife. But bear in mind, before. Moses entered the scene, there was a Joseph. Joseph was the prime minister of Egypt at that time. But what happened, they constantly continued to change pharaohs. Meaning that the pharaohs was not originally those that started. But as they conquer the village or they conquer the city, from outsiders would have conquered the city, they are also named pharaoh. So the Bible said that the Pharaoh who ruled at that time did not know Joseph. Meaning that the Pharaohs that ruled before, they were overthrown by another company of people and they become Pharaoh. So what happened, they did not know Joseph. They did not know what Joseph would have did for Egypt at that time. So the children of Israel, they were in Goshen and because they were in Goshen, they multiplied numerously. They multiplied to a number that it was much more than the Egyptian. But what happened with the Egyptian and the Israelites, they had something that was called willpower. So the Egyptian now, because of the Pharaoh, they are known as God, or they profess to be God, what would have happened? The people who serve the Pharaoh see them as immortality and see them as God. And as a result of that, everything the Pharaoh says for them to do, they will do it. So we see oppression, it was in its highest form. They oppressed the children of Israel by enslaving them. The Bible said they enslaved them for 400 and 
30 years. For 430 years, they enslaved them. Just imagine you have your brother, sisters, uncle, aunt, nephews in a particular country for 430 years and they have not have one rest day. They work every day. They were beaten to work. They was done the, 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 the worst, harshest thing that you could ever think about to work, to please the Pharaoh, to allow the Pharaoh to get rich and to allow the Pharaoh to stay on top. But who was doing the job? The Israelites. And the reason why God allowed them to go into bondage because they began to serve false God and they were disobedient to God. And as I'm on that point, I want to speak about rest. There are so many people who are saying that the Sabbath is the right day. And Jesus would have made a statement in Luke, in Matthew, where he said, when, the, when, when, the, when they were actually up on him and speak about the heal on the Sabbath day, and Jesus said, my father walks, and he the two have I walk. What is Sabbath? Sabbath means rest. The children of Israel, they were in bondage for 430 years. No rest. And God said, when you leave this place, you shall have rest. And there is a passage of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 5. We must read and understand it very clearly because I don't think, I don't think many people who are, who are imposing and who are encouraging people to keep the Sabbath, if they have read that scripture. I'm not here to speak about religion, but I'm saying there are some religion who speak more about the Sabbath. What is Sabbath? And Sabbath was not only on a Saturday alone. You have different Sabbaths in the Bible. But the literal scripture speak about Sabbath means rest. That's the meaning of Sabbath, you know? To rest. Are you hearing me, somebody? And then I'm hearing people say that if you don't keep the Sabbath, you will not go to heaven. But I have good news for you today. For those who are keeping the Sabbath, and let's see how it started. Where did it start it from? Some say it started from the book of Genesis. But I, have dif I, I think differently from that. And Moses, he said here, I want to be able to encourage you. In chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, he said here, Moses summarized all Israel, summoned all Israel and said, Hear all Israel, the Lord decree, the laws I declare it in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with all of us who are all here today. So the Lord did not make this covenant with our father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He did not give them the Sabbath day to keep. Because Abraham was a father. He was a man of faith. And if whatever God gave him was of a sabbatical Position that it then something is wrong. God gave the children of Israel rest from the burden and from the bondage that the Egyptian had them for 430 years. Just imagine for 430 years from your generation, there was no rest. You're walking from Sunday to Sunday, and God said, When you bring them up, Moses, I have to give them rest. I must give them rest. Sorry, if I don't give them rest, they will die. So God tell them, I will give you a day to rest, and the day is Saturday. But yet we understand very clearly that the rest that God spoke about, he said, there will become a time when you are going to have rest from all your burden and your bondage, and Jesus Christ is our rest. Is someone hearing me, please? Jesus Christ is our rest. And that's why I like Matthew 11 and verse 28. Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. I need you to stop following those who telling you about if you don't keep the Sabbath. And I want to understand, I want to know what is Sabbath. Sabbath means physical rest. That's what it means. It wasn't for them to go no place, but stay home in your house and rest. And anyone could challenge me. I grew up in a religious background. I grew up in the Adventist church. And I'm not here to make anybody feel less than where they are. 
Because according to what I understand, God did not come for a religion. God come for a born again, sanctified people. And it's time enough for us to stop talking about who religion is right from, who religion is not right. And let's serve God with a true heart. And by the way, Christ could not have raised on the Sabbath because they would have killed him again. So he had to raise on the first day that no man's think about. In a matter of fact, don't you know that Christ changed the Levitical priesthood? Don't you know that Jesus Christ did not came out of Leviticus or Levi, but he came out of the tribe of Judah? So then once the priesthood has changed, that's why Paul said, there is a change of the priesthood. There must be a change of the laws. And I want us please to read Galatians chapter 3. Paul had to ask Galatians, Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? you, have, you begin in, have you begun this walk by faith or by the law? How do you begin it? But it's by faith. The Bible is telling us for 430 years, no Moses on the scene to deliver the children of Israel from bondage, but Pharaoh will not let them go. All Moses did, the swarms of flies, the water turned into blood, boils upon people, frogs in Pharaoh's house. And for some reason, Pharaoh will not let them go because the Bible said God had in his heart. In chapter 7, God had to speak to Moses and say to him, that's why I'm saying, most of the time when we make statements and say that we are gods, people are feel offended by that. But don't you know that we are common G gods? We are not like what God is, but the Bible said we are common G gods because of how God created us. And that's what God said to Moses. He said, you will be a god unto Pharaoh. So you stand in my position. And notice when you check other version and you look at it, it's a common G word. So God is saying to Moses, you will stand in the very presence of Pharaoh as like a God. So whatever you said, you will be like a God to him and Aaron will be the prophet. So whatever you tell Aaron, Aaron will do it. And I like that. And it is very scriptural. Are you hearing me somebody today? So I don't know what we look forward for. I don't know why we are so eager to be in a situation where we are most plagued by so many different things. But today, we need to change that. What we need to change is to understand whatever God commanded us to do, we must do it with a spirit of holistic and a spirit of simplicity, a spirit of love and appreciation, because God is about to change things. Where is the church today? We have so many different believing. believers believe in so many crap. Where in the word of God have you heard that people must be able to pray for miracles and healing? No minister that telling you foolishness that if you want to receive a miracle, sow a seed. Why should you pay people? Why should you pay a man for healing and a miracle? God said it is free. And let it continue to be free. Read Matthew chapter 10 and you will see. The Bible says freely give, freely receive. Where in the world that you God ever tell us sow a seed? And everything about seed is only about money, 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 money. Why can't you sow a seed of yam and put it on cassava and banana? Why can't you sow a seed of your pumpkin you have in your house? Yes, of course, we will say we don't want that because it's not tangible. It's not making up to what you want it to be. I am saying a seed can be anything. Are you here, Mr. somebody? God wanted to make multiplication in the earth. And the Bible said that in, in respect of that, God placed a seed in Adam. Let's speak about the seed. People who are called by God and ready to carry out God's perfect divine purpose and will in the earth. Saints of God, do not follow these people who tells you the only way that you can be healed and you can be delivered is to give a seed. Stop it. We know the word of God. And may God put a spokes into ministers who are all are going about and speaking foolishness about sowing seed and sowing seed for your miracle and for your healing. I'm sorry. May you may see me and you may say, man of God, you, you are going against the principle and the doctrines that we have read. Yes, you, that is what you read, but I read a different thing from what the Bible tells me. The Bible tells me, freely give, freely receive. I'm speaking about miracles and healing. It does not belong to you. In a matter of fact, you cannot heal no one. 
the doctors who seems to study the medical practice um who are medical um doctors and who are best who are who are very capable and, and able to do mighty work in their field yet they are telling you when they do a surgery on you and they do all the, the experiment on you and cut you up into pieces and stitch you back up they say wait until you get healed why can they not heal you because they can't heal you they are not the healer jesus is the healer and check the life of jesus if the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 young years, the Bible says she spent everything to the physician and she grew worse. And when she met Jesus, she said, oh God, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Just imagine the hem of Jesus' garment open up door for the woman to be healed because she spent all that she have. This is what we want to do to our people. So the rich get richer and the poor get poor. And now because of all of this, the church of God, the church of the living God is going through a real terrible situation. It looks like as though we are not going nowhere because of miserable men of God and miserable women of God who would have believed that the only thing that they can teach about is just money, money, money. I'm saying money have its part in the, money have its place in the, in the kingdom of God, but not as always stressed upon it. The Bible says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. I'm sure that God is fed up with our, with our action and with our attitude. The way we, we crave for money. As one preacher put it across, he said the Lord gave him a vision and showed him what it looked like. He said for those who crave after money and crave after money, they, they will be dealt with accordingly. God says some of them already have their reward in heaven. And not only preachers, those who are out of corn people. Some of us, we are just out of corn people for their money. I has no problem in doing what the scriptures speak about. In paying our tithes and our offering, I believe in that. It does not matter how small your tithes is, as long as you give it to the church that you are you, that you actually um, going to. Or the church that your membership is into, God is going to bless you. Don't withhold your tithes from it. And if God wanted more money, we'll tell him, give 90%. But all he asks us to give 10% of our own earnings. And still we feel for some of us it's not enough. I am not vexing, I, I, I will not vex with you if you give more than what you think you can give. But I'm not here about money. I'm here about miracles, healing, deliverance. Because God wants his people set free, money or not money. And for all the years I've been preaching, I've not charged anybody a cent, and I will not. I remember sometime I went to somebody's house to, 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 to pray for them, and they wanted to give me money, and I was felt very uncomfortable. But hear me, somebody. Don't you know when you go to these people who sees about backs, hand, foot, belly, they will tell you, I don't need the money in my hand. Don't give it. We're not charging you, but if you want to give something, you can give it. And these are not people who save. These are unsafe people. If you give them the money in the hand, they'll tell you, I cannot take it because I will lose the gift. And these are unsafe people. But yet we have people who know God is telling you, you have to give this amount of money for healing and for miracle. May God judge you. May God judge you. Let's stop our foolish behavior in the kingdom of God. So the people who are outside are having problems to come in because all they see that the church is good for is just money, 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 money. That's all. And may I tell you, Bishop Basil is very, 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 very not pleased about that. For me, I believe your tithes and your offering is good. But I also believe in blessing people. For me, there are so many things that I... I go to the bank and get when I need my financial breakthrough. I have other needs, both my wife, we have, we have so many different things. We build a church in Lekito, offer tithes and offering. We never borrow a cent from the bank to do that. We ourselves, as ministers, would have poured our money into it, give our money into the king, things of God. Because God is saying, yes, it is the right thing to do. And whatever, whatever is due to me, Bless God for it. But not in a place to manipulate God's people. Are you hearing me, somebody? That's not my desire. 
Money or no money will not stop me from preaching the gospel. Now we have this truck over there, this kingdom traveling. All of my money, all of my money, all of my money, all of my money. I'm, I'm saying 95% of the money for me go on that truck. Some people may have gave and help, yes, but not as much as I will pour out on that truck. And the purpose of it is from going from street to village to village, preaching the gospel, letting people know that Jesus is coming soon. And I'm not begging people for money. I often said, if you want to make a contribution with us being on the air, you can. But I will not tell you what to give. Because I don't believe in putting bondage or yoke upon people. It's fine if you don't give because God will still provide. But if you so desire, I can't stop you. But my thing about it, when I come to your home to minister, don't ask me how much I charge because I did not charge for praying for people. If I used to charge for praying for people, I would have been a rich man. A lady tell me she went by somebody who professed or desired to give her a bath. And she said when she heard the money that was called to give her the bath, I said, well then, that is okay because that is her profession. That is what she's doing. I have no argument with that. But if we are doing anything under the name of Jesus, please don't charge the people. Don't charge the people for healing and miracle and deliverance. Don't charge them. Freely give, freely receive. And this is what God was telling Moses when God sent Moses back to the children of Israel, back to Egypt. Moses had a good life under Pharaoh, but Moses had to go back now as a man of God, not as a king or a prince of Egypt, but as a man of God. He ran for his life, and now he's going back to save the children of Israel. He said, the Pharaoh who you were under, they are dead. All of them is dead. And who remain now? don't know much about you. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God holy? Isn't God mighty to see how God can use a man who grew up in Egypt? He lived there for 40 years. When he was 40 years, he spent 40 years away. And now that he's going back to a different king of Egypt under the ranks of Pharaoh who did not know him. And because of that, he was able to tell Pharaoh, let the children of Israel go. You, some, you ministers who are holding some of the people in bondage, whatever field you are calling to, and you are holding God's people into bondage by restricting them, but, but by also punishing them for not giving the amount that you expect them to give. If they are not paying the tithes and the offering, yes, you can, you can, you can actually speak to them or discipline them. But beside that, let us be honest with God's people. There are some people going to church who have nothing. And sometimes we as ministers don't know because they are trying to attain all their money to pay the tithes and the offering. When last have we asked them, when last have you have a good eat out? It's time enough for us who have to say, okay, let's have a feast. Let's have something. Let's do it. May God bless us today as ministers of the gospel. Let us not be a novice in what we do. Paul, who planned so many churches, Paul said, only Philippian church that blessed Paul. Paul was a tent maker because Paul was not so much on the monetary gain. So many people are just on monetary gain, just money, 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 money. I am so, I'm so sick with that. I mean money answered all things, but no, we don't oppress people because of that. Today, I want to thank you very much. I'm not angry with nobody. I'm just angry with what the devil is doing to the body of Christ. Pushing us around, pressuring us, causing us to be very uncomfortable. And that, that ought not to be. Because God is the one who calls us. God is the one who saves us. And God is the one who will continue to make us who he wants us to be made. Amen? So, to pe so my friends and my family, I hope you're not vexing. I hope you, 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 you don't vex with me because of what I've said. Because if you vex with me, you will not go to heaven. But yet I must speak the truth. Read Matthew chapter 10, and the Bible will tell you, somewhere in the verses, that freely receive, freely give. So if you have anybody who comes on the television and telling you, you must sow a seat for you to get your healing in America, and because you are desperate, let me say this to you, Bishop Basil could help you. How he could help you? I can pray for you and believe God, and you don't have to pay me a cent. You hear what I'm saying to you? You don't have to pay me a cent. 
because I don't look for people to pay me for miracles and healing. No. Yes, yes, sometimes people said, okay, you didn't want money, I didn't want to pay you, I said, but what I do, this is to the church. I said, okay. And I just give it to the church. Because I'm not in the thing of charging people for miracles and healing. The bottom line of what I want to say to you, I do not charge people for miracles and for healing. Because if I charge people for miracles and for healing, I would have been a rich, rich man. But I'm not by Jesus. Or Simon the sorcerer. I'm not them. I am only Basil Francisco Edwards. I want to thank my dearly beloved wife, my dearly beloved wife, Agatha Dillon Edwards. She is my, she's the love of my life. And as I often say, all other female there, my brothers and sisters, the only one that is intimate to me is my wife, Agatha Dillon. I want to say to you, honey, I love you very much. And I will continue to be there for you. I will continue to be, be there for you. You are my friend. You are my best friend. You are everything I could ever think about. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my partner for 31 years, going on 32 years. I love you to all my heart. And to you viewers who are out there, I won't say how much I love you. Bishop Basile, your friend, love you very much. Of course, I said, if you call and do not get me, call me again, please. Because what will happen? As long as I sit, I will call you back, right? So I want to see the Lord bless you in a special way. May I pray for you today? Father, we pray for these beautiful people, wherever they are, those who are sick and still not able to pay the doctor's bill because they don't have the cash. And even though they do have the money, so many ministers have been put, um, so many things have been pushing on their throat. The only way you can be healed, you have to find some money or sow a seed. No, God, it's not like that. The seed is already in us. That's the word of God. You said in your word that if we believe by faith, we already healed. Jesus paid the price for us, O oh God. He said you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we were healed. And we is healed. Yes, we are healed by your blood. So the Lord, we thank you for your blood. Bless these people. Touch them, O oh God. Minister them in a special way. For all of you who are celebrating Christmas, let Christ be the center of your Christmas. Of course, I know you will hear for, with, um, from me again before the season is over. But I want to say to you, don't work too hard. Christmas is only one day. It will come and go. And hear what happened. Don't spend all your money on curtains and different things. January morning, bright and early, you have one full year in front of you again, and you will need that money. Amen? Blessings to you, and I will say to you, Bishop Basil, love you again, and have a real wonderful day. Amen? Shalom. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards invites you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m on Tobago Inspirational Network 